Good morning and welcome to worship for Sunday, January 10th, 2021. It is long tradition to remember Jesus' baptism on this, the third Sunday after Christmas. We will do just that today here at the baptismal font. Later on in the service, we will stand at the font again, confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed, and greet Megan Lindstrom, who is joining Vesa as a new member. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light, and our salvation. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea, you led your people, Israel, from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life, and above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to turn in your hymn books to hymn number 533, Open now thy gates of beauty, hymn number 533. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, sent from heaven above, be with you all. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, with joy and awe, we praise you for claiming us as your sons and daughters and for pouring your Holy Spirit upon us. Help us to prepare this earth for your glory and shine your light on all your faithful children for the sake of the one whose birth and baptism brought renewal and transformation to this world, Jesus Christ. Amen. Psalm 51, verses 6 through 17. You desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my sacred heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. 
Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain me in a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from the bloodshed, O God, O God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your deliverance. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. For you have no delight in sacrifice. If I were to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. O oh God, you will not despise. A reading from Luke, the third chapter. In the 15th year of the reign of the emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip, ruler of the region Alteria, and Trachonitis and Licinius, ruler of Abilene, two during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas. The word of God came to John, son of Zechariah in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. John said to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, you brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise, then does not, then should we do. And in reply, he said to them, whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none, and whoever has food must do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they said to him, teacher, what should we do? He said to them, collect no more than the amount described to you. Soldiers who asked him, and we, what should we do? He said to them, do not extort money from anyone by threats of false accusation and be satisfied with your wages. As the people were filled with the expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah. John answered all them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. We will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he will burn with the inequitable fire so that with any other exhortations, he proclaimed the good news to the people. But Herod the ruler who had been rebuked by him because of Herodias, his brother's wife, and because of all things, evil things that Herod had done, and added to them all by shutting up John in prison. Now when all the people were baptized and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased.
May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our and our Redeemer. Amen. Garrison Keillor used to open his Prairie Home Companion monologue with the words, It's been a quiet week in Lake Wobegon, my hometown. It's been a week, yes, but not a quiet one. The extraordinary images that we witnessed on television and social media this past week were unprecedented in the history of our country and deeply upsetting. For many, it's been hard to stay focused on anything except the news. So how do we shift focus today to the Bible, to the day's scripture lesson, and to any message that God might be speaking to us? Let's begin with a little bit of breathing. I ask you to sit up straight, feet flat on the floor, hands on, the, on your legs or on the arms of your chair. Be comfortable but be erect. And now breathe in deeply. Draw in fresh new air using your diaphragm. And as you do so, say to yourself, I am breathing in peace. Hold it for just a few seconds and then exhale fully. And as you exhale, say to yourself, I am breathing out justice. Breathe in peace, breathe out justice. Breathe in peace, breathe out justice. The images that we witnessed this week are images that made many of us deeply uncomfortable. The scripture lesson from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 3, tells us another story of crowds of people who are made uncomfortable. John the baptizer bursts onto the scene in our gospel lesson for today. Unlike the other gospels, we don't have a description of his clothing or what he eats. Luke focuses our attention on his message. The Bible tells us that the word of God came to John, but this doesn't properly convey the power or an intensity of that experience on John. The sense is more like the word of God rushed upon John in such a way that he was compelled to speak, and he wasn't concerned about what he was to say or how to say to deliver the message, how to say it. He wasn't afraid of who he might embarrass or anger with his words. And he finds himself in the wilderness, speaking a message of repentance through baptism for the forgiveness of sins. People responded to John's words in spite of their harshness. Crowds gathered. It's odd to recognize that John doesn't greet them with soft, consoling words of welcome. Nope. John calls them a brood of vipers. How would you respond if you went to a worship service and the pastor greeted you as you walked in by calling you a snake in the grass? Probably wouldn't go over very well and you probably wouldn't come back. John's harsh rhetoric has a purpose, however. John's job is to get the people ready for the coming of the Messiah. His intent is to force people to realize their sinfulness. His words make people face the ways in which they have strayed from the basic principles of living as a part of God's chosen people. His words are effective, and in response, the crowds ask him with a very simple question, what should we do? John's response is practical, and it can be distilled down to three points. Share, be fair, have no care. First, share. John says in verse 11, whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none, and whoever has food must do likewise. It's basic sharing. These words challenge us, though, because of our relative affluence. I don't know about you, but I have more than one coat hanging in my closet. In fact, I have three winter coats, each with a specific function or use. Is John challenging me to give two of them away? And what about the food? 
When I cook a meal, I most always prepare enough so that there are leftovers for Mark and I to eat later. That's a system that works pretty well for us. John challenges me to consider whether that excess food should be given to someone who is hungry. So when you think about sharing, there are no easy answers. And each one of us has to consider what sharing means in our lives. So that's sharing, first principle. Second principle, be fair. The tax collector asks the same question, what should we do? This collection in Israel, which was under the control of the empire at the time, was a tough business. Tax collectors were doing what was appropriate so that they could make a living, something to live off of. They were under constant pressure by the ruling authorities to increase the collections, and they were hated by the local people because they were viewed as traitors. So when they ask that question and John responds, and how were caught between a rock and a His instruction was that they should collect a prescribed amount, no more. And act with integrity. Be fair. The same principle of being fair can also be applied to those soldiers. It's interesting to imagine why soldiers were out in the wild places with John. Perhaps their assignment was to watch the crowd so that no rebellion against the empire could be um, organized. But words matter. We've certainly learned that this week. And it appears that John's words had an impact on everyone who was present, including the soldiers. What does he tell them? Don't extort protection money from anyone. Don't use your power for financial gain. As keepers of the peace, you have an obligation to act with integrity. In other words, be fair. Third principle, have no care. The crowds were filled with expectation. They had a sense that something was about to happen. They asked John if he is the long-expected Messiah, and John is candid. He states plainly that he is not the Messiah. He continues, one more powerful is coming. I baptize with water. He will baptize with the Holy Spirit and with fire. The chaff is about to be burned away with unquenchable fire. Strong words, ominous words, words predicting that the people are going to undergo hardship. We grow a lot of corn and soybeans here in Goodhue County. The seed pods from the soybeans and the husks around the cobs of corn are necessary parts of the plant. They protect the immature grain until it is ripe. Another word for those seed pods and husks is chaff. Chaff is necessary for growing But when the plants come to maturity, chaff has to be removed. As you well know, eventually those plants dry down and they are run through a combine. Those dry husks and pods, the chaff, is beaten off, spewed back into the field, and the grain is collected. The mechanics of harvesting are different nowadays, but it's the same winnowing process that John is talking about. Just like harvest grains, the crowds are going to undergo a winnowing process. John warns them that this winnowing is about to start, that change is coming, it's coming soon. And that makes them fearful. Remember, corn and soybeans cannot by themselves separate from their husk. There must be an outside agent. John is preparing people for that outside agent that is to appear, but that doesn't mean that it's going to be easy. Who will that outside agent be? We name him Jesus. And he is identified by God in two ways in today's scripture lesson. 
first by the Holy Spirit who descends upon him in a physical presence that looks like a dove. And second, he is identified by God who says, you are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. Yes, it's been quite a week. We have been exposed to some of the powerful forces of extremism and anarchy that exist in our country. Winnowing. Winnowing is painful, and that's what we are undergoing right now. Even in the midst of we must strive to keep on the Messiah. Jesus is the bedrock upon which we stand. He is our salvation. World by a loving God and Father. We must always begin by keeping our sights set on Jesus. How do we live? What about tomorrow? Do good question for us. And John's answer to the crowds is the same pattern of living that should we should apply to our lives. Share, be fair, have no care. Grace and peace to you. Just as the Heavenly Father's voice spoke from heaven to claim Jesus as the beloved Son, we too are beloved of God and we can rest secure within that knowledge no matter what happens to us in our world. Amen. I invite you to turn in your hymn book to hymn number seven. My vision, hymn number seven ninety three. Friends, we give thanks for the gift of baptism and for Megan Lindstrom, one with us in the body of Christ, whom we welcome as a new member into the life and ministry of Vesa Congregation. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In baptism, we are welcomed into the body of Christ and sent to share in the mission of God. 
We are called to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. Megan, as a sister in Christ, do you intend to continue in the covenant of your baptism among God's people in this place? I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. People of God, do you promise to support and pray for Megan as a new member of VESA and for her life in Christ? On behalf of the congregation, I affirm that we will support and pray for you and ask God to help and guide us all. Let us welcome Megan as a sister in Christ to this community of faith. We rejoice with you in the life of baptism. Together we will give thanks and praise to God and proclaim the good news to all the world. Let's spend a little time in prayer. Sisters and brothers, our baptismal vows call us to compassion and mercy on behalf of those in need. We offer our prayers for the church and the world. We pray for the church and its leaders that we may prepare your way through our witness and service to others. We intercede today for First Presbyterian and the United Methodist Church, both of Red Wing, asking that your spirit would rest upon them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for creation, that we may prepare your way by working to heal and restore the damage we have caused it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our nation, that we may find a path to justice and peace for all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the lonely and anxious, that we may prepare your way by sharing your comfort and love with those in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those struggling with illness, especially Scott Sorensen, Linda Thompson, Max Tilderquist, Jesse Otto, Jerry McRae, Eileen Anderson, Jeanette Larson, Zeke Pearson, Gloria Skoog, and Paul Mickelson, that we may prepare your way by surrounding them with compassion, care, and comforting love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for this assembly of faithful persons that we may prepare your way by bearing witness to your grace and mercy in our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for LaVon Carlson, Jordan Fredeen, Kennedy McCann, Kaylee Nelson, Max Evanson, Ellie Gardner, Marissa Mandelkow, Tegan Nelson, Denny Hovde, Dylan Anderson, Sherry Broin, Brianna Soini, and Andy Nelson, who celebrate birthdays this month. Bless them in their going out and their coming in. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all the saints that we may prepare the way as they did before us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, you revealed your Son in the waters of the Jordan and anointed him with the power of the Holy Spirit to proclaim good news to all people. Sanctify us by the same Spirit that we may proclaim the healing power of the gospel by acts of love in your name. Amen. Our generosity moment for today is simply to say thank you to every person who financially supported VESA Congregation over this last year. We ended the year in solid financial shape with your strong giving. Now, as we face a new year, we look forward to continuing the work of ministry that God has placed before us. So many thanks for all that you have done in support of us. I invite you to prepare your hearts and minds now for Holy Communion. Holy God, you alone are holy, you alone are God. The universe declares your praise. Beyond the stars, beneath the sea, within each cell, with every breath, we praise you, O oh God. Generations bless your faithfulness. 
through the water, by night and day, across the wilderness, out of exile, into the future. We bless you, O God. We give you thanks for your dear Son at the heart of human life, near to those who suffer, beside the sinner, among the poor, with us now. We thank you, O God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering his love for us on the way, at the table, and to the end, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We pray for the gift of your spirit in our gathering, within this meal, among your people, throughout the world. Blessing, praise, and thanks to you, holy God, through Christ Jesus, by your spirit, in your church, without end. Amen. I invite you to join in the prayer our Lord taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to share the body and the blood of Christ in your home at, that, at this time, remembering always that the body of Christ is given for you and the blood of Christ is shed for you. body and blood of our Lord Je and Savior Jesus the Christ be with you now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Christ Jesus, at this table we have feasted on your very life and are strengthened for our journey. Send us, send us forth from this banquet, nourished in body and in spirit, to proclaim your good news and serve others in your name. Amen. I invite you to turn in your hymn book to hymn number 673, God Whose Almighty Word, hymn number 673.
close our worship service with a blessing. God, the creator, strengthen you. Jesus, the beloved, fill you. And the Holy Spirit, the comforter, keep you in peace. Amen. Go in peace. Be the light of Christ. Thanks be to God.